Welcome to Your Daily Dose, a devotion ministry of the Faith Baptist Church of Franklin and Middletown, Ohio. Thanks for joining us each weekday as we share God's Word with you. It's your daily prescription for all that ails you. And now, Your Daily Dose. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Your Daily Dose. Glad that you're here today. Today we're going to be in uh, the Gospel of John, Chapter 4. One of my most favorite uh, books of the Bible. It's kind of an incredible story that has a, a ton of application to the Christian life. Now, we've all heard the story. It's about the the woman at the well. Um, now, I'm not going to take the time to read the entire chapter because I know we've all got other things to do, but I encourage you, go and read this evening sometime the entire chapter of, of, of the Gospel of John. Uh, it's chapter 4. Uh, because there's a lot of things that you have to kind of set up to really get some application out of this. You know, uh, the Bible says that Jesus must have needed to go through Samaria. Um, it's an interesting thing that Jesus would even go through Samaria because the Jew and the Samaritans were, were not uh, compatible people. They were spiritual enemies. Um, not only uh, does, does this story have a lot of application, but this woman that Jesus found uh, as she came towards the well, she was a woman with a very questionable uh, reputation. Um, and not only that, she was coming at a time of the day to the well where no one else came. Uh, the Bible tells us that it was uh, Jacob's well, uh, and here Jesus is about to meet uh, this woman from the city of Samaria. She came to the well at that time of day, I think for a specific reason, that was because she was an outcast from society. She was uh, uh, considered an unclean woman, and she knew that by going when no one else was there, she could avoid all sorts of, uh, of scrutiny and, and shame. But today something's different. As she gets closer and closer to the well, she notices that there is someone else there. There's someone sitting at the well. Now, when she gets there, she looks him up and down and kind of sizes him up, and she realizes based upon the way he was dressed, the trim on his garment. She noticed he was a Jew. But not only that, she noticed this man sitting on the well, but he has nothing with which to draw water. Then we know the story, Jesus asked her for a drink. She's pretty astonished because, uh, I mean, the separation of Jew and Samaritan means that they wouldn't really have, have even communicated or spoken to one another under normal circumstances. You know, uh, I heard someone preach one time, they said, oh, there's a, a lot of coincidence here in this passage of Scripture. Uh, you know, I don't agree with that. I don't think there is any such thing as coincidence with God. The Lord came to this well at this particular time, on that particular day, to meet that particular woman. Now, we know the story goes on that it tells us that once she realized she had met the Messiah, she became so consumed with the need to spread the news to everyone else that she left her water pot at the well. Today I want to take a look at that water pot. Now, it, it was not a special water pot. There's nothing different about it than any other pot. But I believe that, it, that the water pot itself is quite symbolic of what has taken place in her life. And that's because the first thing, it pictures the old walk of this woman. She left the pot behind. That was the symbolization of leaving the old walk and beginning the new walk with Christ. Because you see, our standards and our judgments change when we meet Christ. Once weary of the Lord, she became his greatest witness. The water that she had thirsted for no longer mattered. Because she got a taste of that everlasting water. And there was no pot necessary. That's the same thing. The, the, the pot is the picture of salvation. When we meet the Lord and our life through our faith is changed through the Lord. It pictures the old walk of the woman. Now secondly, that pot pictures the old will of the woman. Now, she didn't just walk away from the well. She also left her pot to then go into the city. She was going into the city to, to witness to those who had already shunned her, those who had already shamed her, and told them that she met the Messiah. It's interesting to me that the scripture doesn't say 
that they questioned her or that they said, are you, you sure or that they shamed her in any way? She said, I've met him. Come see him. And they went. They trusted her. But they wouldn't have any other day. I've always wondered why. And I think that left behind pot is why. See, the left pot tells me that they saw something different in her that day. Now, I'm sure she didn't walk any different. She didn't dress any different. She didn't, she didn't look any different. But I think she did speak different. I think she did act different. And I think she had a joy that they had never seen in her before. Now, you know, I'm not implying that she immediately stopped all of her old habits, all of her old sins, and became, you know, squeaky clean, clean Christian on the spot. In fact, to the contrary, uh, what it was was that she now had a new master. She now had a new will. The pot pictures the old walk, the old will, and it also pictures the old ways of the woman. You know, truth be told, none of us were any different than this woman when we got saved. We had a separation between us and God, and that was our sin. Sin is a defect in our nature that comes to us uh, simply because we're a descendant of Adam. Paul wrote in uh, Romans chapter 5, For as by one man's disobedience all of us were made sinners, but by the obedience of one shall we be made righteous. When we have sin in our lives, we cannot enjoy worship. We can't enjoy fellowship. We, we can't enjoy our walk with the Lord as long as we're clinging to the old walk to our old will, to our old ways. Verse 26 of uh, chapter 4 says, Jesus saith unto her, I that speak unto thee and he. Now he had introduced that they were promised a Messiah, and he is then at that moment telling her, I am that man. Now interestingly enough, if you, in your King James reading there, am he is in italics. Now, that means that that was not literally in the old text. It was added for clarity and understanding so that we could understand. Um, there was no Greek word for am he, for the Messiah, for, the, the, for his uh, stature. So they used those words to infer it. So what he said was, I that speak unto thee. I am that Messiah. And then two verses later, the Bible says, Then she left her water pot. You know, there has to be that time in our life where we separate from the world, where we leave our pot behind, and we become that witness for him. When she left her pot behind, she left her old walk. She left her old will. She left her old way. What about us? Well, you know, today, if you're a Christian, uh, the sin that once separated us from God no longer separates us. Oh, but it can hinder us. Trust me, it does. You know what that sin does? That sin makes us look to the world like we're still at the well holding on to our pot. Our witness our effect on others, how the world sees us, all gets affected by the sin in our lives. I don't think I'm saying uh, that, that immediately becoming a Christian will deliver us from all our old habits. Just like the woman at the well, it didn't necessarily change everything in her life. You know, I'd be a rich man if I had a dollar for every time someone has told me that they couldn't defeat some sin or uh, that God hasn't taken away the desire for some <clears throat> for some habit or, or that the Holy Spirit hasn't convicted them of something being sin. As Christians, by, by the virtue of being Christian, we've overcome the old walk. We've overcome our old ways. We've overcome our old will. So why can't we overcome the habits, all those sins that so easily beset us? Reminds me of the story of the frog. Uh, who accidentally jumped into a pothole. 
He tried and tried to jump out of that pothole, but he just couldn't. After a while, his friends came along, and his friends cheered him on and encouraged him to jump up out of that hole, but he just couldn't jump out. Eventually, all his friends left him in the hole, essentially left him for dead. The next day, though, they saw him bounding along just fine. They stopped him and said, well, What happened? We thought you couldn't get out of the hole. And he said, Well, a truck was coming, and I had no choice. I've said all that to wrap it up this way. There's a lot to learn from the woman at the well. The pot that she left behind represents everything we did and should leave behind. Now, if you've never accepted Christ, today is a day to realize that that old pot full of sin and misery and separation between you and Christ can be left behind for a new way, for a new will, for a new walk. But this time, with Christ at your side, if you've accepted Christ and you're having trouble leaving the pot behind, whether it's uh, sins of the flesh or uh, whether it's bitterness or worry or even disbelief, you know what? it's time to leave the pot behind and press forward for the Lord. Just a simple object used in in an illustration in, in the scriptures, but such application for the Christian. And I encourage you, go back, Gospel of John chapter 4, read that later today. You'll get the whole story in, in full context. Now, you'll probably find something else to apply to your life as well. That's the beauty of the scripture. We can, we can read the same passage a thousand times and get a different application for our life each and every day. Thank you again for joining us. We'll close in a word of prayer. Our gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this time. Uh, the, of Bible study that we have together. Lord, we pray that it would be a blessing to those who are listening. Lord, we pray that you would uh, bless our church. Lord, keep us all safe during these times as we're not together as much as we normally are, Lord. But pray that you'd bless the time that we do have together. Lord, we encourage everyone to uh, stay safe, Lord. And Lord, we, just, we, we long for the day where we can come together once again uh, to sing praises to your name and study your word together, Lord. And Lord, we pray that uh, if there's anybody watching this, Lord, that hasn't accepted you as your Savior, Lord, we pray the Holy Spirit would convict them. Lord, we pray that you would, would, Lord, you would just, you would show them your grace, show them your mercy. Lord, that we as fellow Christians would show the grace, mercy, and love that you showed to us toward them every day. Lord, we pray that our example uh, would lead others to Christ. And Lord, for, uh, Lord, we just pray that you would bless us. Lord, we pray that everything we do would be for your honor and glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, and have a great day in the Lord. This has been your Daily Dose, a ministry of Faith Baptist Church. Subscribe to our YouTube channel today and click the bell next to the button to sign up for email notifications each time we live stream or release a new video. To learn more about faith, please visit our website, fitinatfaith.com, for more information about our church. Have a great day in the Lord.